Okay, here we are. We're on the second part of the thyroid gland. Previously, we talked about the morphology, which basically is a word that means the study of the structure. So that's before this. We have three items to talk about. Negative feedback mechanism, which basically keeps hormone levels in check. We have goiter, which is a word that means enlarged thyroid gland. Doesn't say why it's enlarged, but it's enlarged. And then we have a couple discussions on thyroid disorders and diseases coming up. Now we're ready to do the negative feedback mechanism. Very common for hormone systems. Some hormones will feed back and tell some other stimulating hormones to decrease their production. So it's a way of maintaining constant level of hormones. Okay, let's look at this diagram since we're talking about thyroid glands. We'll explain this. Here we are, hypothalamus. We know it releases thyrotropin releasing hormone. This plus means it stimulates something downstream. The downstream is the pituitary. When the pituitary sees TRH, the pituitary releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Another plus, which means it's going to go and find its target tissue and stimulate something. Thyroid stimulating hormone goes in the blood, finds the tar target tissue, which is thyroid, and the thyroid releases T4, thyroxin. Other tissue will convert T4 to T3. If there's T4 that's free in the blood, it has a negative feedback mechanism to both the pituitary and the hypothalamus. And that tells both of these tissues to release less of the hormone they're making. For the hypothalamus, that means release less TRH. For the pituitary, that means release less thyroid stimulating hormone. That's what this minus means. Now on the other side of the diagram, they're looking at T3, free T3, minus, minus. That means stop producing or at least decrease producing what you're doing. Free means in both cases, it's not bound to a carrier protein like albumin or a specific carrier protein. So free is biologically active. If it's bound to a protein carrier molecule, it's not biologically active. Now we're going to talk about goiter. Goiter means enlarged thyroid gland. It's the whole gland that's enlarged. Let's look at a couple. This is an image taken from a necropsy. And you know a necropsy is the examination of a dead animal to try to determine its cause of death. And in this case, it's a necropsy of a newborn foal. Here is one thyroid. This is actually the animal's left thyroid. And this is the right thyroid. Because this is more ventral and behind it is dorsal. So this is left. This is right. That's maybe not important. It's, the point is the thyroid glands are enlarged. And a newborn animal can experience goiter if the maternal environment, its mother, didn't have enough thyroid 
uh, production because of a low amount of iodine. Okay, so let's take care of that one and come up with this. And we have a person with goiter. In some countries of the world, iodine is very lacking. And in this case, the thyroid glands have enlarged. The isthmus that's present in humans isn't very apparent here. But that's not the point. It's an enlarged thyroid gland, probably due to deficient iodine. And then we have a dog that has goiter. Okay, now remember, goiter is an enlarged thyroid gland, but we don't know why it's enlarged. Could be iodine deficiency, could be cancer, could be whatever. Now we're going to talk about two very common disorders of the thyroid gland. One, hypo thyroidism, hypo, meaning a low level of thyroid activity. Then we're going to contrast that with hyperthyroidism, hyper, meaning above the thyroid activity, the normal activity. Well, it ends up being dogs, not puppies so much, but aged dogs, have hypothyroidism. Probably occurs four, five, six years of age and beyond. And that means the thyroid is not making enough thyroxin, T4. And then you know that gets converted to T3. So in dogs, that's not such a big deal of course it's a big deal but not such a big deal because then you can give a daily tablet that contains thyroxin that's orally active okay so that's not too bad not perfect but it's not too bad the bad case though is hyperthyroidism where the thyroid is making too much thyroxin. Okay, what do you do with that case? Well, it ends up being in cats. Cats tend to have hyperthyroidism. Well, that's not as easy to treat because you've already got too much going on in the cat as far as the thy thyroid hormones. Several common treatments involve giving radioactive, radioactive, I should say, iodine, which then the thyroid selectively uptakes, and then some of the tissue is damaged and destroyed, and then less T4 is produced. Two other treatments are to prevent T4 production, and then another treatment actually involves preventing the conversion of T4 to T3. Remember T3 we said earlier in another lesson was the most active, biologically active hormone of the two. So it's harder to treat hyperthyroidism versus hypothyroidism.